Yes, this video will probably help architects or designers more. You will be able to show alternative versions of your projects as well. Anyway, I will show it and how and where you use it is up to your creativity. Let's start. I had found a room scene like this. You can also find one from Fab or any platform. If you cannot, no problem, you can use a cube, a sphere, etc. in an empty project to learn. Do not leave the video to go look for models and then not come back, because that happened to me before. Unfortunately, our surroundings are full of distractions. If I can manage, I will share the project file directly in the description. Anyway, let me briefly explain the logic from the start so it forms in your mind first. Now, we will place three different sofa set alternatives in this empty area here. We will hide two of them, one will be visible. Whichever sofa set we select from the menu will become visible, the others will be hidden. That is the whole idea. I summarized it in broad terms, now we will do the coding process by setting up algorithms with a top-down approach. Once you grasp this method, everything gets much easier, friends. Anyway, I talk too much. I already made a video about algorithms. You can find it on the channel. Let's begin. Since we will interact with it, let's first create a blueprint for our sofa set. Press Ctrl and Space to open the content browser. Right click Blueprint Class Actor to create a blueprint. Name it and open it. By the way, if you do not want it to open as a separate window each time, go to Edit, Editor Preferences, Asset Editor Open Location, and choose Main Window. In the Components panel, click Add to add a static mesh. Press Ctrl and D to create two copies. With static mesh selected, from the Details panel, I choose the sofa set object I prepared beforehand. I had merged them all into a single object beforehand. Apply the same to the other static mesh components. Adjust their location relative to the floor. Now we want everything to happen only when we enter a specific area. So we should not be changing the sofa set from the garden, right? <laughs> For that, add a box collision. Adjust its size and location. Yes, as I said at the start, we should hide the sofa sets that should not be visible at game start. I select these objects and disable the Visible option in the Details panel. Drag and drop our blueprint into the scene. When we enter the area, information about which key to press to open the menu should appear. We will create a widget for that. Right-click, User Interface, Widget Blueprint, User Widget. Name it and open it. From the Palette panel, I add a Canvas panel. This is like a frame in Figma. In other words, it is the area we see in-game. I import the button images I prepared beforehand. I drag the visual that shows which key to press onto the canvas. Here I set it so it will be roughly at the center of the screen. I adjust its size and so on. If I explain these parts in detail, the video gets too long and you get bored. I have already talked too much up to now. If you have not quit out of boredom by now, you are legends. If there is anything you do not understand or if you have suggestions, please write in the comments. Anyway. For a good feel, we want it to appear and disappear on screen with animation. I had touched on the difference between function and feel in my launchpad video. You can check it out if you want. Anyway. In the Animations panel, I click the Animation button to create an animation sequence. I click the Add button here and select my image on the canvas. By clicking the plus icon here, we can see the options for what to animate. I select Transform. 
From here on out, it is the process of animating its size, location, and opacity using keyframes. If I explain these one by one, saying I did this and that, you would have to listen to me for hours, so I will speed up. Because I am an obsessive designer, I fuss over every unnecessary detail. Yes, the result is like this. Now we will make it appear when we enter this area. Let us enter our sofa set blueprint. With box collision selected, we go to the very bottom of the details panel. And we click the plus icon next to the on component begin overlap option. A node appeared in the event graph. This node means run when you enter this area. From its output pen, we search for create widget and add this node. From the class part, let us select the widget blueprint we created. From the owning player pen, I call the get player controller node. So right now we said, when the character enters this area, create the widget. Okay, it creates the widget, but we did not say show it in frame. Well, welcome to the world of algorithms. You have to state every detail as if explaining to a fool. I right-click the return value pin, say promote variable, and create a variable. You will understand why we did this in a moment. From the output pin of our variable, I call the add to viewport node. I connect the target pin to our variable. Right now, it creates the widget in frame, but we did not set whether it is visible or not. From the output pin, I call the set visibility node. I connect the variable we created to the target pin. And I leave the is visibility value as visible. Okay, let us take a look. As you see, it appears on the screen. But as you see, our animation does not play. Well, we did not say play the animation. How is the machine supposed to know we want this? We will add a play animation node between add to viewport and set visibility. We connect the variable we created to the target pin. I drag from the in animation pin and search for the name of my animation sequence. It does not appear because we need to disable the context sensitive option. Yes, let us connect our variable to the target pin of this as well. Okay, let us see now. As you see, now it brings it to the screen with animation. But when we exit, it still stays on the screen. Let us fix this as well right away. With box collision selected, we choose on component and overlap. In fact, we will connect the node that comes up by reversing the animation we played. We copy and connect it in the same way and choose Reverse. Let us see. Yes, now we know which key we should press. But while inside the area, let it disappear after a while. It should not stay on the screen forever. For that, we will add a delay Then connect a set visibility node and choose hidden. While a jury or a client is inspecting the sofa, there should not be a warning stuck on the screen, right? If you want it to close with animation, I think you now know how. So we press the E key, but nothing happens. There is no menu or anything. Now we have come to the main part. Finally! <laughs> I create another widget in the same way and open it. I add a canvas panel. I add four button widgets. I will quickly set their positions here again. I select the images I prepared beforehand. 
You can adjust the size and location from the details panel. I will go fast through these parts again. Please indicate in the comments the parts you do not understand or cannot do. Rest assured, I do reply. Yes, it seems fine like this. We will set up the animation in the same way. If you wish, I can make a separate video for this user interface area. Yes, not bad. Now we will make it appear on screen when the user who enters the area presses the key. For this, we enter our character blueprint. I right click and add E key event. From the pressed pen, I call the get actor of class node. From the actor class option, I select my sofa set blueprint. From the return value pen, I select the get overlapping actor node that is connected to the capsule component. I add a branch node to the return value pen. From the true pen, I call create widget. From the class option, let us select the widget blueprint we set. Yes, that is, right now we said, if the actor that enters this area is our character's capsule component, create the widget. I right click the return value pen, choose promote variable and create a variable. In the same way, I add the Add to Viewport node and connect the target pen. From the Output pen, I call Play Animation. And again, I connect the variable we created to the target pen. From the In Animation pen, we search for and select the animation sequence we created. And we connect our variable to the target pen. We add a Set Visibility node to the Output pen and again, connect our variable to the target pen. In fact, up to here, it is almost the same as the previous widget. After this, we will set it so that we can use the mouse cursor to make selections from the menu. From the Set Visibility Output pen, let us call the Set Input Mode UI Only node. From the Player Controller pen, let us call Get Player Controller. Connect the In Widget to Focus pen to our variable. From the output pen, I add set show mouse cursor. Compile and see. What happened? Okay, let us connect the return value pen of get player controller to the target pen of the set show mouse cursor node. Now let us see. Yes, the menu appears, but we need to turn off the button borders. I select the buttons and in the Details panel, choose the Draw As Options as box. Alright, we have handled the menu job as well. Let us move on to seeing the alternate sofa sets from the menu. From the top right, click the Graph button to open the scripting screen. On the left, we see our buttons. Let us handle closing the menu when the cross icon is pressed. With the button selected, click the plus icon next to On Clicked in the Details panel. On Clicked, from its output pen, add a Play Animation node. From the In Animation pen, we again select our sequence. From the Output pen, we choose Set Input Mode Game Only. Game Only. From the Player Controller pen, I call Get Player Controller. After that, I add a Delay and a Set Show Mouse Cursor node and leave it as false. I connect the Return Value pen to the Target pen. Compile and see. Yes, it works. In the same way, let us select the button we created for the sofa sets. Click the plus icon next to On Clicked and add an event. From the output pen, let us call the Get Actor of Class node. From the Actor class part, I choose our sofa set blueprint. 
From the return value pen, let us get all the static mesh components we created. From here, let us call the set visibility node. Connect these two nodes. Set the new visibility value to true. Copy the set visibility node and connect it to the previous one. Set the new visibility value to false. Let us also connect the sofa sets we do not want visible to the target pin of this node. You get it, right? When you press this button, show this sofa set and hide the others. We will apply this to the other buttons as well. Compile and see. Yes, you can now create a 3D catalog. Of course, with this collision method, it is not very healthy to make large projects. You probably see on YouTube that they can interact with all objects inside big rooms like this. These are done using systems like Line Trace and Blueprint Interface. It is a bit advanced, but if desired, I will explain that too. This is a video I prepared more for people who will make simple presentations. Anyway, I guess I felt like talking too. I hope I did not drag it out too much. I try to explain as fast and as simply as I can. As I said, friends, you can write in the comments if there is an issue. Also, please subscribe. I do not have a fixed upload schedule, but even if late, you can be sure I will keep posting. Ciao!